All right. Well, welcome back to Film Buff Brothers. Today, the podcast is going to be on editing and pacing. Right. Yeah. Very important parts of filmmaking. Totally. Super important. Like, like probably for me, pacing one of the, like, if not the most important thing. I think everything else can be fairly shitty, but if the pacing is... Um, quick enough then it's enthralling and, and captivating like the, the sound can basically suck acting can basically suck and it's hard to say the so- story can suck because that's really what it's like pacing is you yeah know? it's like how you tell the story or how you lay out the format of the story the bones of the story you yeah because yeah. you can have a million different stories all with that same kind of quick pacing right like yeah and with with i think uh the attention spans of the youth these days and just people, even older people now because of the internet and all that technology yeah. is that I noticed when I, when I got to like 40, like that ace, uh, pacing and editing was just something that I could turn a movie off really quick. If, if it doesn't have that in the first five, 10 minutes of a film. I think it um, taps into something uh, innate in, in people to, cause it's like, do I need to be paying attention to this if it's if it's not captivating? It needs to have the story needs to have uh, dire stakes uh, at hand in every scene. Or it's it's like why am I, why am I watching this? Why am I sitting here passively watching something? It's like you're already not interacting with it, so it, it needs to um, catch your attention. And I think we talked about this. We did talk about this in the uh, very first podcast we did on the porch, uh, rewatchability. And I think the reason it's rewatchable, it's like, it, again, is because the pacing and the scenes are encapsulated. There's something um, that's at stake that really matters in each scene. And that's why it's, it's I want to say like addictive or I, I keep saying captivating. Like, for example, um, other than Jaws, American Psycho, I had that as my number one uh, pick. E- even though it's basically a character study uh, and not much um, really happens, it's kind of repetitive, but these things matter so much to Patrick Bateman, like the business card or um, uh, mm, trying to think of something else uh, trivial, like the suits, the, the, the dry cleaning, these trivial little things he blows out of proportion You know, so because it matters to that character and because you're way, the guy seems like a ticking time bomb uh, that it, 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 his performance, obviously, and his his conveyance of that character being so uh, shallow and um, sensitive makes it really captivating and it makes these trivial things seem dire. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it goes, we can say it goes back to the writing in the sense of like the character was just written with so much. Uh, believability and investment in him in himself so we as the audience will now invest in him because we we buy what he's he's selling himself actually so yeah i think the character it helps if the writing is there and the character is written where he's he does have uh some sort of not either sympathizable or maybe empathizable character trait uh, I've, you know, we've never killed people, but we watched a movie where he's killing people. But so if we can't th- sympathize, if we can't empathize, then we should at least be able to sympathize, uh, to the character. I was going to ask you, what do you think is, uh, some movies that are possibly edited too fast or too slow? Because I think editing too f- fast, like if you ever saw a movie called, uh, Domino by Tony Scott, he did it after Man on Fire, but you, you watch the editing film. It's so, it's like a infomercial flick just you get uh, epilepsy seizures just watching it's so fast the way he cuts i didn't i didn't like it it was too fast i did not see domino but i think so many movies and i say that's more so editing uh than uh pacing like the editing um and man i mean saving private ryan the opening scene shoulder mounted camera cut 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 uh, I think there's there's a variety of scenes, but there's lots of cutting. It totally makes sense for an action scene, like totally on board with that. But I remember, ooh, it wasn't Zero Dark Thirty. It was Hurt Locker. I began to watch Hurt Locker, and there's an action scene at the beginning. Boom, like m- makes sense to have the shoulder mounted camera and and quick um, cuts, um, short cuts, uh, pun no pun intended, short duration of 
scenes, not scenes. I don't know what exactly you call that, but what would you call that? Like not a scene, but like, uh, is it a take? I guess you could call yeah, it a take. a take. Yeah. Well, anyway, point being the next scene, there's a bunch of dead, uh, service people and their caskets are in this, uh, I believe it's an airplane hangar and someone is looking over the caskets. They have the flags draped over top of them and they and it's a, a fairly long duration shot and it's a long shot. The character, you can see like their entire body and more of the, the, the alive person who's overlooking these caskets and they have a shoulder mounted camera and it's like, why are you doing that? Like, like throw it on a tripod, throw it on, on a, like a, a track, anything but shoulder mounted because it just screams. There's a camera here. And if people aren't moving around and there's not a lot of action happening, you don't need to do that. But as far as the question that you asked, uh, a movie that is paced too quickly, uh, that's tough. That is really tough to say because there's so many movies that um, try to be artsy and are paced really slow. Yeah. Um, there's... Uh, what did you think about the Dark Knight series? I really did not like them. And I think that was more so because of the acting I thought uh, the I really wasn't uh, captivated um, by it. Uh, the fairly slow pacing in Batman Begins, yeah, uh, and then in the one with Heath Ledger, Dark Knight. I guess yeah. it's just called Dark Knight. Yeah. That one I thought um, was the, the acting. the The character actors were really bad. It sounded like they were just reading off paper and. There were some cool shots. I remember like when he's hanging out, uh, Heath Ledger as Joker is hanging outside of the car, shaking his head around. That was pretty cool. But like the scenes with like the mafia guys where he like puts the pencil through the guy's eye and all that, just like just the acting was just so brutal. I can't really, I only saw it once. I'm not a huge into action movies. Um, you know, just like the kicking and the punching and like John Wick stuff is just seems like just terrible like why am i watching this i'd rather watch uh ufc or boxing or something it's just yeah. i hate that sort of stuff so it's really hard for me to give an opinion on something which i i don't even know if i finished the movie i really like the opening sequence in the the final one where they're in the airplane the music's yes. awesome uh again acting really bad um but i thought it was uh like yeah it just i don't know i just can't imagine people like behaving so like jovially in in like a, such a, a dire uh, circumstance, okay. you know. Um, I, I I do yeah I remember like the, the the editing and like the shots and the camera angles were really cool and it's just like an amazing feat to pull off what they did. Like they literally like cut an airplane in half and had it another airplane like dragging it. Right, you can see it's not CGI. Yeah, I I really like the pacing. I think not in Batman Begins. I think he was getting his stride there, but by the second one, Dark Knight. Like just, I saw it in theaters and just from the beginning, it's just, there's like this just humming sound as the camera's closing on into skyscraper window. You don't even know which window, it picks a window, pop, window pops open. And from there, this, the movie moves and there's like this music kind of humming like underneath the whole time and this momentous, just it felt like momentum the whole time. Like remember the movie Speed? And even that movie can like it takes like half an hour to pick up after all the exposition. But but once it gets going, like there's such a momentum, not just the bus moving, but everything, but the cutting and everything. So yeah, I thought those were good. I think Hitchcock's one of the best edit uh, as far as overseeing his editors. Uh, obviously, just Goodfellas, Scorsese's, and uh, the Raging Bull. Uh, he, his cutting is amazing. Also, uh, Aronofsky uh, and. Uh, in Black Swan and The Wrestler. And who was the other guy I was thinking of? Well, Kubrick, obviously. And David Fincher, like Zodiac, The Game. Remember the movie The Game? Oh, the Game's great. Yeah. Really good pacing. It just keeps going. It just doesn't sit in any, any moment too long. It, it just keeps moving. So uh, I think I prefer like thrillers for editing and pacing. I think, like you said, I'm not a big action movie guy, even though they're generally edited better than a drama film. Uh, but yeah, I think, um, as far as pacing, you can have like a movie that's all in one day, like kids and speed 
it's kind of all most of the movie takes place in one day i think like when jeff bridges dies in the beginning that's one day and then it hops to i don't know like a week or so later and then most of the movie and then there's like the ticking time bomb aspect of it where we're not necessarily but if you go below like the speed and then also you know the bus only has an x amount of uh gas in it um so I think a lot of films that take place in one day, it's uh, fairly, I don't want to say easy, but uh, it's more likely to, to keep the audience's attention because it's so quick what's happening. Sure, sure, yeah. But then there's also movies like Goodfellas that take place over a long period of time where it's like selecting the highlights of, yes. of uh, over a long period of time. But I think that the time play, the, the time period that the story takes place contributes to the, the pacing um uh, like the the third act of jaws you know it's essentially not in real time but it all takes place over you know like maybe a 48 hour period at most third third acts are are really difficult for example we we're talking about speed the third act and speed it you know, no pun intended, but slows right down yeah, yeah, because yeah. now it's not on the bus anymore and it's him hunting him like in, in the subway or whatever. And it just doesn't have that. Um, obviously, like the stakes are high, but it just doesn't have that ticking time bomb suspense that you have um, when you're on the bus. Another quick note on a movie that's really long, but I think the pacing is really good is uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Long movie takes place over a several month period but peter o'toole does such a great job acting it's an interesting character and then the character arc also i think adds to um the uh, keeping the interest of uh, of an audience i mean I, I know a lot of people don't like that movie for me that movie has a lot of rewatchability you see this arc of the character and then also maybe an, another thing that helps with pacing or keeping the audience's attention is showing them what happens at the end like knowing uh that you know he dies yeah. at, at the beginning it kind of makes you wonder how he got to that point right yeah yeah and, and yeah sometimes it's not uh yeah we want to know how we don't have to we don't have to be surprised at the end of a film but yeah yeah no it's a good point i didn't really think about that uh I don't really, it's a whole different conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, Hitchcock said that he didn't feel it should be called cutting. Have you ever heard that clip? It, it was like a, a beginning of a rap song or something, but it was a clip of him talking how he said it should be more like collage, like you're making a, you're making something, you're forming in like a puzzle rather than just cutting stuff because it, it's more like you're adding and you're, you're adding stuff together than subtracting stuff. I think... With editing, just from the editing I've done, it, and you probably know the same thing, is that everything is encompassed with the edit. So it's it's not just shaving off two seconds of a scene. It's where was the camera when the cut was made? Or like where was the camera moving in that scene? Was there music in that scene? What was the scene about? And uh, I know it's bad editing a lot of the time. is is just seems somebody is just kind of relishing and sitting in mm. like maybe performance too much. And, oh, this actor, I just have to put a camera on this actor and just that's all I got to do. It's Daniel Day-Lewis. It's like, no, not no. You still have to like worry about all the stuff that encompasses a scene. Uh, so, yeah, editing to me isn't just like, but you notice if you shave off two seconds of a scene or a music video or whatever it is, it makes so much of a difference. Like every single little scene you shave off two minutes in and you, you go, well, that, that just flows better. That just like has way more uh, flow to it. But again, I, I don't think you could, as a, as a filmmaker, I just wish more filmmakers would just not revel in the performances so much and just go, I can just have two people at a table talking. Well, you can sometimes, but it, again, if it's old hat, we've seen it before. It's two characters talking. Like there's got to be something, some camera or some plot thing that you're bringing. There's something there besides just going. Oh, these actors are good. They can they can just do anything. I don't even need to write. I don't even need to direct. So yeah, yeah I can't think of it off the top of my head. But oh, actually, uh, the possession with Sam Neill. I and, tried and to watch girl. that a couple times. Yeah, yeah. The editing it was like there. The, the takes were too long. It was like they a lot of the no sorry that it was abrupt. They were they were cutting it. Um, they they were cutting in just like weird spots and and uh, I think 
another thing that popped in my head is music and there's something in, in music called a tonal note like dun, 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 dun. like if you had dun, 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 and then it changed to something else like having that tonal note having that like final uh note to it um kind of wraps up like uh, encapsulates a scene and i thought they were cutting it in in weird places and like even if you're doing something like panning away to to like kind of like an, an establishing shot or having a look of uh, confusion on a, on a character's face, like something that will kind of set up the next scene or yeah, with music having like, and again, there will be blood long movie character study. I can, I, I didn't like it at first, but again, watching it, I think I, I, I like the soundtrack always with that movie. And I think that it really does help carry, uh, make a scene final and then carry on to the next scene. And there's other movies where they really utilize scoring just as a scene is transition, transitioning, like Rescue Dawn, a lot of the scoring tr takes place um, right at the end or at the beginning of scenes. And that kind of ushers you into the the next scene. I, I think what I understand about Possession, because I tried to watch it a couple of times, but it it's like something to make you unnerved, like to, to cut it in something that's totally opposite from what we're seeing. So I think that's where they were going with that. But that is a slow movie that it's taking me. It's more of like a drama, it mm -hmm. seems, but it's highly rated as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here. Her scene was way too long when she's like writhing and, and being possessed or having like the epileptic seizure in like this subway um, um, station. I thought that was way, way too long. And like, I don't know, there's no CGI and it's just her like ah, writhing in the hallway just like for several minutes. And yeah, that's yeah too too long for me. Yeah, sometimes shorter, sweeter. It's more effective, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, pacing, like we said, very important. Integral, integral. Yeah. Please don't forget about it. All right, until next time. Thanks for watching, guys.